Hi, I'm Shannon Sievert, and today we are looking at what outliers are in data. Take a moment to look at the vocabulary here on this page. If you need to, pause the video and take a time to look over it. By the end of this video, you should be able to do this problem. If you want to take a moment to look at it and try it on your own, then at the end of the video, I'll show you the answers. What exactly is an outlier? Well, it's a number that is kind of an oddball. It doesn't seem to belong with the rest because it's either so much larger than the rest of the numbers or much smaller than the rest of the numbers. If you look at this list of numbers here on the screen, you'll notice that the number 11 seems to be larger than the other ones. So I would guess that might be an outlier. But how can we know for sure if it's an outlier? What do we do? Well, let's check that out. If you look down here below, I'm going to show you the formula of how to find an outlier. But the first thing we need to do is put these numbers in order from smallest to largest, just like you would do if you're finding the median. So let's do that. So our first numbers here that are smallest is the number one. I'm going to cross that out and write it here. Then we have one, two, three, threes. two fours, a five, a seven, an eight, and finally the eleven. So now we got them in order from smallest to largest. Let's find the median. Cross them out until we find the middle number. Keep going back and forth. So now we know that the middle number is going to be here between these two fours. Well, the middle of two fours, that's just a four. So that is our median. Now we need to find our first quartile. So we're going to take the middle number of the first half. Let's do that. I'm going to cross these out until I find the middle again. This one is our first quartile. I'm just going to say first Q for short. We'll do the same thing with the second half. Cross it out. Here we go. This is our third quartile or a third Q. The first quartile and the third quartile are important because we need them to be able to find our inner quartile range. In order to find that range, what we're actually going to do is subtract Q3 and Q1. So Q3 minus Q1 which happens to be 7 minus 3 is 4. On the screen before, we found that we had a first quartile of 3, a third quartile of 7, and an IQR of 4. We're going to put these into a formula, as seen right here. Outlier data points are found by finding any data that is smaller than the first quartile minus 1.5 times the IQR, or any data that is larger than the third quartile plus 1.5 times the IQR. So let's find if we have any of those data points. So quartile 1 is 3, and we're going to subtract from it 1.5 times 4. 1.5 times 4 happens to be 6, so we're going to take 3 minus 6, which ends up being a negative number, negative 3. If you look at our points over here, you'll notice that we don't have any negative numbers. So we don't have any outliers that are lower than our data set. Let's look at the upper quartile. We have 7 plus 6, 
in this case because 1.5 times 4 is 6 again. So now we're adding that to our third quartile, and in this case, we have 13. Notice that I had originally said that this is a large number and it could be an outlier, but 11 is smaller than 13. So in this case, it's not an outlier. So let's look back at our data again. Here we have on the screen all of our data, but what if we happen to have this weird one that's really way out there? Let's say it's a 20. Earlier we saw that our upper quartile boundary was at a 13. Well, clearly 20 is greater than 13, so 20 would be considered an outlier. So what exactly does an outlier do to our data? Well, let's look at it without the outlier and with the outlier in measuring the mean, median, mood, and range. First of all, the mean is when you add all the numbers together and then divide by the number of numbers. And in this case, without the outlier, we have 32 divided by 10 data points, which equals 3.2. If we counted the outlier in it, which is 20, into that, we would have 52 divided by 11 this time, because we have 11 data points instead of 10. This would give us a mean of 4.7. Well, clearly, the outlier does affect the mean. Let's look at the median this time. If we're just looking at the first numbers here, from here to here, without the outlier, and I cross them out until I find the middle point, once again, it's right between the two fours. So our median here is a four. But let's now count to 20 in it to see what the median is. I'm going to use a red pen this time. So we're going to start at 20 and count our way down to the middle. And our median, still 4. Didn't really change anything. What's our mode in this case? The mode, remember, is the most frequent number. And here, we have a mode of 3, because 3 shows up the most. And that's the same in both cases. What is the range? The range is always the largest number minus the smallest number. 11 minus 1 is the range for the first one, which is 10. And 20 minus 1 is the range for the second one. So the outlier does affect the range as well. So remember, in general, outliers only affect the mean of the me measures of central tendency, and it affects the range. Well, remember that problem I gave you at the beginning of the video? Here it is. What are the answers? Well, like magic, they'll appear. As you can see on the first one, it looks like 4 would probably be the outlier. And if you were to look at the mean with the outlier, it's 12.4. And without the outlier, it's 13.6. So that outlier actually dragged down the mean because it's a bottom outlier. Also, the median was changed just slightly. The mode wasn't changed at all, but the range had the largest change. So this was our largest change in this case but the mean was definitely affected. On part B, we have a mean of 5.5 and without with the outlier and a 4.6 without the outlier, and in this case the outlier was 15. Well, this outlier dragged up the mean. It made it larger. So the mean was definitely affected a little bit, and so was the median just because it added one more number to the bunch. But that's not a great difference in that case, but a little bit. And then the range here, once again, showed our greatest change. So today you learned about outliers, those oddball numbers that are way out there, either below most of the data or above most of the data. And you found out how to find them. You had to find the IQR, 
multiply that by 1.5 and either add it to the third quartile or subtract it from the first quartile. You also found out that an outlier can affect the mean. You can either drag it down or drag it up. And it definitely affects the range of the data. So I hope you better understand what an outlier is.